Story time. I love Rust. It's the perfect game because it has everything in one. Shooting, driving, adventure, freedom, sweet, sweet memes. I'm Helen Keller, and if you don't sub to Mr. Black, I'm going to put a bullet in this bear. So click the sub button in three, two, one. Problem though is that Rust runs like garbage. A while ago I reviewed some next level new generation laptops. You know, fancy internals, crazy stats, and while they slayed other games, Rust ran... Eh. I even bought my daughter a $5,000 PC in one video. And while magical, also... Meh. <coughs> For no reason, you're not even in pain, you just... Old man grunt. So I hopped online and started researching. Turns out throwing huge amounts of GPU power at it didn't fix the problem, and the internet unanimously agreed that Rust was a CPU intensive game. Not GPU. Fair enough, I thought, and I researched some more. And according to Emperor Linus from Linus Tech Tips, the current best gaming CPU on Earth is currently the i9-12900K. So I got on the phone with my homies who's at Asus South Africa, and it went a little something like this. Hello? Asus? Hey, Flack. How's that sexy new laptop? Don't have time for that! Linus! i9! He said, best ever. Gimme i9 now. Whoa, buddy. <laughs> The i9 is the newest, strongest CPU on earth. I don't care. Give me i9 immediately. Dude, there's literally three reviewers on earth who have the i9. We can't send you one. No, I need it to fix Rust, please. That's too bad. Sorry, bro. If you don't give me i9, our relationship is over. Okay, bye. Wait, what's up, tough guy? Do you maybe have the i7 12700K? Yes, we do. We'll send it. It turns out I had other motives. You see, new gen Intel CPUs aren't like the old ones. While the i9 was a 16 core CPU with 24 threads, and the i7 was a 12 core with 20 threads, both CPUs have the same amount of performance cores. Are you planning to do something underhanded? Never! Send me that medium level mediocre i7. I'll manage. Intel's new 12th gen splits the cores with performance cores and efficiency cores. So while the i9 has 8 performance cores, the i7 has 8 performance cores. Huh? Nope, you didn't hear that wrong. The i9 and the i7 have the same amount of performance cores. The i7 has 4 less efficiency cores, meaning while you might have to wait an extra split second to open a Word document or browse the internet, gaming wise they're basically the same. Turns out they are actually near identical. And weirdly, sometimes the i7 is better? than the i9? Nonetheless, the stage has been set. Asus was going to send me their latest gen stuff, the Z690 platform, DDR5 new generation memory, and of course, that undercover i9. It's time to finally see what Rust performs like, the strongest gaming CPU on earth. And just like that, days later, the box arrived. It was very heavy. That is a PC. Good lord. All the reflections. Let's, let's close that up. Let's see what we've got here. A CPU like I've never seen before. We've got some beautiful, what is that? Fury DDR5 RAM. I have no fucking idea what that is. Good lord. ROG Hyper M.2. What? We got like an M.2 external card. I don't even know what half this stuff is. Like, I literally don't know what half of the stuff is, but apparently it's the latest and greatest that um, Asus has on offer. My word. Little straps here. This is top level. Obviously, I'm going to overlay the specs. I don't know exactly what's in here. I know it's super powerful. I was told it's got DDR5. I was told it's got an AMD graphics card, weirdly. Is this loose? A little bit. Um, told it it had an AMD graphics card, but still top of the line. 32 gigs of DDR5, latest generation, and M.2, I didn't know about that card, but that should play a huge factor in this test, but holy absolute fuckballs. This is exciting stuff. Oh, I'm just weirdly excited. Look at the ports of this thing. I think, if I'm not mistaken, that power supply, <laughs> I think that power supply has um, a little LCD screen on it, I suspect. But good gracious, this is amazing. 
Right, I have to pop this open. Oh, look at that. Look at that. So the glass door I said it's a bit loose. See this little button here? How cool is that? That is bonkers. Oh my word. Look at that CPU cooler. I think... <laughs> Check that. So it's got three... What is that? 120 mil fans? It's about 120 mil fans on a massive radiator. It's got... I don't even know what that is. Actually. I think it's just a bracket. <laughs> this CPU cooler, I'm told, has a screen on it, like an LCD, like you can program graphics on it. And apparently it's uh, an Asus model. I'll give you the name on screen now. And you can program graphics to run on it, which is pretty amazing. I know the M.2 is plugged into this M.2 card, obviously. Filled with fans, this is, I don't know what graphics card this is. I'm not familiar with AMD models. I know it is AMD's top card, so, you know, Think, think uh, something that will rival the 3080, 3090-ish, I think. Top of the range motherboard, you can see that a mile away. But goodness gracious, this thing is absolutely gorgeous. Um, but, you know, looks can be deceiving. So let's power this bitch on. Let's get some rust loaded. And let's see what the world's most powerful CPU with DDR, latest generation DDR5 RAM, what a separate M.2 card can do as well as this GPU. I would have preferred an NVIDIA, I'm not gonna lie, but you, you can tell by looking at a card if it's a chunky boy. This is a chunky boy of note. So, yeah, and I mean, this is obviously a top-end motherboard. This is, oh, I need to water the plants. This is big boy shit right here, but uh, this is gonna tear shit up. Oh, I'm excited, let's go. Okay, so I've just plugged it in now. The motherboard's not actually on, the computer's off. Uh, that whine that you can hear in the background is my server so this is off but it's got a really cool animation we're gonna pop it on quickly this is on button Fuck stop. Ah, okay that's the on button um yeah look at it it's like what it's very pretty um lights everywhere the power supply does have a screen like i thought aces thor um, and it shows your live wattage which is which is really cool but i think it looks great the case is beautiful. It lights up really nicely. This is like a gloss type of etched thing on the front. Looks phenomenal, quite frankly. I'm very, uh, I'm very impressed. So, yeah, let's get busy. Look at that. that. That's so cool. Okay, just before we get started, one final thing: the i7 is slightly weaker than the i9 in terms of its clock speed. So you'd have to essentially overclock it slightly to get it to match the i9's clock speeds. But the Asus motherboard that I've got here has something called an AI tweaker. Now, if you know anything about like overclocking, which I know nothing about, you will know that it's quite difficult to overclock because you have to tune it and then test, tune, test, tune, test. It's a mission because obviously if it runs too hot or too hard, it will crash your system. The AI tweaker does everything for you. You just literally activate it and it runs the CPU as powerful as that particular CPU can run. Remember, not all CPUs are the same. They have different silicone makeups, that type of thing. So if you use the AI tweaker, the system overclocks it for you to its maximum safe state without having to test a single thing. I freaking love that. This overclock actually makes it slightly more powerful than an i9 with a click of a mouse. It is unbelievable. Okay, so let's find ourselves the busiest server that we can find. Everyone tests Rust on these small ass quiet servers. I'm gonna find the most popular, oof, Rustoria, the evil dreaded Rustoria, sitting on 581 pop. It's very well into the wipe, which means everybody's got massive, massive bases and compounds built. If there is ever a server that one needs to test Rust on, I can assure you this is absolutely the most draining server you'll find in the world. Now, I have displayed a couple of specs on the top left for you guys to see. I've shown all 20 threads of the CPU. You can see the temperatures, you can see the load on the CPU, and you can also see the frequency at which the cores are running. The only stat that I see that isn't accurate is the DDR clock speed. For some reason, it's not showing that 4800 megahertz. It's showing a very incorrect amount. If it was accurate, it would be going up and down like crazy right now. So keep that in mind. The GPU is the AMD Radeon RX 6800 XT. I'm not sure what that is, but apparently, according to Google, it's the best card that AMD has on offer. Don't know. But also, I have shown its temperature, its load, its voltage, and the frequency in which it's running at, as well as the FPS counter. 
This is also a demonstration of how fast the server loads in. Uh, with such a massive server, you would think it would take a massive amount of time, but look at that. Unbelievable. Now, as I load in, I can, I can hear people dying already. But I can see a solid 130 FPS on the yeah. beach. Obviously, it's going to get worse because that is how it is. But honestly, 130 is not horrible. I've got my settings set to about... Oh, Jesus Christ. I've got my settings set to about medium. I'll show you guys in just a second. Oh my god, I hate Rust so much. I hate Love Rust so much. Are you targeting the user? Don't Get back. Okay, so this is a, a noisy game. But look how fast it loaded into a server with 580 people. It was less than a minute, or a minute, if anything. So, very impressive. The frame rate, you know, I expected a lot better, to be honest, with that amount of power. But, um, not horrible. Gonna run around just to get to very busy complicated monuments and stuff just to get a better feel of the frames to see how it drops but at the moment it's now on like 120 you'll notice the cpu as well as the gpu isn't working very hard it's not very hot I check the graphics oh okay never mind the graphics is set to full look at that setting it lower but the frames don't improve that bothers me see there same ish I've now dropped it from 144p to 1080. Now, it should go up. The frames should shoot up, actually. I've set hey, the resolution man, smaller the, naked, sir, the frames stay the same. Here. If I lower the graphics, the frames stay the same. I've set the graphics to basically potato now. You can see the ground looks atrocious, the trees look atrocious, but the frames don't go up, okay? So I've lowered the graphics, I've lowered the resolution, the frames stay the same. This is annoying. And let me tell you why. Okay, so I'm at Apex Legends now. I just landed. I'm playing 1440p resolution, ultra graphics. The graphics is visibly, you know, better than Rust. And the frames are already a bit stronger than Rust. You can see there, it's 1440p. So I'm going to switch it down to 1080z and apply. And then the frames shoot up. You see, it's supposed to do that because it's rendering less video. Now, if I go back into the settings and I drop it to 720p, Look at that. Again, another shoot in frames. That is how graphics is supposed to work. If I lower the detail, for example, turn everything off. Okay, it's all on lowest graphics now. On 1440p. And look at that. Frames go up. God, that's so smooth. I could shred like this. But 40 Same thing with Rocket League. I've got it on 1440p. Everything's ultra. Frames uncapped. Look at that. 455 FPS. Uh, obviously, this is just menu. Let me enter a quick arena. Okay. So, 360 FPS. And we are on 1440p at ultra graphics, right? Now, let's change the resolution or the detail. See what happens to those frames. Okay, we're dropping it down to 1080. So this is 1080, everything ultra still. And there we go, frames up by 90. 90 to 150 frames more. Look at that, over 500 FPS. That is unreal. I'll never see it, but the point is, is that it's relative. When I lower the resolution of the graphics, I gain performance. Okay, I'm dropping down to 720p. And there we go, the frames go up by another 80, another 40, 80 FPS, because I lowered the resolution. Okay, so we're back on Ultra Graphics at 1440p. You can see that frames again is in that 460-ish region. Leaving it on 1440p, but now dropping the, the details, making the graphics worse. You know, putting everything on performance, low detail, blah, 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 anti-aliasing off, that type of thing. Now let's see what we get. Oh, wow, look at those FPS there. 960, is it the highest I saw? 960 FPS. Gosh, imagine we lowered the resolution with the low detail. Okay, wait, I'm gonna do that. Oh, wow. 
<laughs> I saw it reach over a thousand FPS on 720p lowest. That is insanity. Look, Rocket League isn't a very graphically important or strong game, but the point that I'm trying to make with the Apex and the Rocket League demonstration is that it's relative. If I lower my rays or I lower my details, I get better performance. But in Rust, that is not the case. I just want to see if it's going to perform any better with nighttime, daytime, monuments, that type of thing. I'm on Rust Story, and you think the got... Hey, is he friendly? Oh, he's so nice. Why is he? Why is he nice? This is Rust. Kill me, goddammit. Oh god, he's giving me food. Oh, I was gonna kill him, but now he's so nice. I'm just like hanging out in this random base with this dude, like looking out into the distance. Oh god. Spread the word of Allah. Oh no, I missed it. I missed it. I kind of feel bad that I left my friend with that door camper dude. I should go help him. Is this him? Is this homie? No, it's not him. I'm naked in it, mate. How the fuck are you missing, mate? You, you, you fucking stink. No, you, you stink, mate. You fucking missed. Clap and wave. Fucking idiot. You killed homie! Mate, you're a sexy boy, mate. You should kill yourself. That's what you should do, mate. Like, you're gonna sit here and go, Oh, I'm gonna listen to him, guys. It's funny, mate. It's funny, I got no mic. I can't speak because I'm fucking six years old, mate. I got no mic because I sound like a fucking female and I'm like 20 years old, mate. Is that, is that, is that we are, mate? Like, look at you, mate. I'm not gonna say anything because it's funny. Oh, I look so ominous. You look like a fucking retard. Yes, I'm by an enormous compound. Typically, Frames on even my existing computer do drop when I get around large structures. It doesn't seem to be doing that here. It seems to be quite stable, quite um, quite nice actually. So that's at least good. The performance stats of those CPU and GPU and temperatures and loads, they are not struggling at all. At least that's a good thing. I'm very impressed with the performance, but again, it's not scalable. I don't know why Rust operates like that, where you can drop your rays, you can drop your graphics, but it doesn't matter what you do, the frames stay the same. Okay, so now I'm at the outpost and the frames have dropped heavily. Obviously, there's a lot of people on the server. It's a busy area, but the frames have dropped to near nothing. The load, the temperatures, nothing is struggling on this computer. Nothing at all is struggling on this computer. So to answer the original question of this entire video title, how does Rust perform with the world's strongest or almost world's strongest CPU? It sucks. But that is not the hardware's fault. The hardware is operating optimally. Apex, I've never had a smoother game in my entire life. Rocket League, over a thousand frames. I mean, come on. At the end of the day, the problem with Rust is Rust. And then one final test, we're doing Cinebench. Now, I'm comparing this CPU to, obviously, other CPUs. It's busy running at the moment, and it estimates that it's going to probably finish third on the list. And the only two CPUs on this list that are stronger in terms of processing power than this actual i7-12700K is the 32-core Ryzen Threadripper and the 24-core Intel Xeon, which is a server CPU. So it is pretty much confirmed to be an absolute monstrous CPU. And I can see it's got a score of 22,812. And when compared to the five faster similar types of CPU, you can see the i9 does beat it according to the processing power. That's probably those efficiency cores. And the only other CPU that beats that i7-2700K 
is the Ryzen 9 5950X, which is an absolute beast, if I had to be honest. So yeah, so globally, this is what? top three i mean only the iron 9 12900k beats it probably due to those efficiency cores and of course ryzen's absolute top end 5950x can beat it otherwise th that's it that's the fastest you can throw at rust and clearly because rust is not using all that processing power it is not making the temperature warm it makes you wonder honestly what the hell is wrong with rust we just want a smooth gameplay experience but we're getting all these lag spikes and stutters and just constant problems and irritations and frame issues and i just wish that face punch would cut unity start over and you know develop this on unreal thank you to intel and asu south africa for sponsoring this little experiment for me i had an absolute blast trying out this machine with all those new technologies and all those fancy gadgets and stuff i appreciate your support and to the viewers i thank you so much for watching i appreciate your time to my darling beautiful patrons thank you for your never-ending ongoing support and i'll catch you next time and for my next video, I've got a special little surprise. I've got a new little toy. It's kind of a secret, but it's pretty amazing. I hope you watch it. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this. Smash the dislike button if you thought this was disgusting. Thank you for your time. I'll catch you soon. Flack out.